So today we're going to talk about the pressures of the heart. Um, this is my simplified drawing for the pressure of the heart, the different chambers of the heart. Um, so this is the right atrium. This is the tricuspid valve. This is the right ventricle. It, this is the pulmonic valve. This is the pulmonary artery, uh, which goes to the lung. And this is the button, the, uh, and then comes back to the left atrium. This is the mitral valve here. This is the left ventricle. This is the aortic valve and the aorta. So, um, so what's the pressure in the right atrium of the heart? Um, when I ask that question, I get a lot of different answers. Um, so, um, remember that I've been I'll be using average numbers. The pressures in the different chambers of the heart varies a lot, and it also changes with different disease conditions. Uh, so for right atrium, we're assuming it to be um, 0 to 5. Now, is this a systolic pressure or a diastolic pressure? Uh, remember that both the right atrium and the left atrium are kind of venous systems. They don't really have the musculature to generate a systolic pressure. And so the right atrial pressure actually varies uh, from 0 to 5. Now, what happens is that during um, diastole, the tricuspid valve opens and the diastolic pressure in the right ventricle becomes 0 to 5. Uh, during systole, however, the right ventricle has a lot of muscle, so it can contract, and the pressure, the systolic pressure in the right ventricle becomes, say, 30. 30 is the upper limit of normal for the right ventricle. Uh, and so during, uh, again, during systole, the pulmonic valve opens, and the right atrial systolic pressure, the right ventricular systolic pressure equalizes the systolic pressure in the pulmonary artery, which is 30. Uh, during diastole, however, the pulmonary uh, valve closes and the diastolic pressure in the right in the pulmonary artery becomes 10. Now, 10 is, uh, so when we measure the wedge pressure, we are actually putting a swan through the pulmonary artery into one of the branches of the pulmonary artery and trying to estimate the wedge pressure, uh, which I am assuming is almost equal to the same thing as the um, pulmonary artery diastolic pressure, which is then equal to the left atrial pressure. Now, the left atrium is a venous system, and so basically that's the average pressure in the left atrium, which is equal to 10. Now, the mitral valve will open during, system, uh, during diastole again, and the left ventricular diastolic pressure is 10. During systole, the left ventricle can contract, and from a pressure of 10 with so much muscle, it can go up to a pressure of 120. Now, this opens during the aorta, the aortic valve then opens, and the, diastole, the systolic pressure in the aorta becomes 120, and the diastolic pressure is now 80. So now this is the summary. So um, the left atrial, so right now we have the right atrial pressure 0 to 5, the right ventricle 30 over 0 to 5, the pulmonary artery is 30 over 10, is almost equal to the wedge pressure, is equal to the, the left atrial pressure. Uh, the left ventricular pressure is 120 by 10, and the aortic pressure is 120 over 80. So this is um, the summary of the average pressures of the heart, the average normal pressures of the heart. Remember that in, this, um, in explaining this, I've assumed that all the valves are normal. Um, and are perfect. Uh, however, this doesn't really happen. Uh, so we have a little bit of variations, uh, you know, and if it's 0 to 5 in the atrium, it could be like 7 or it could be um, maybe 3 in the diastolic pressure in the right ventricle. Uh, but this is the basic uh, knowledge uh, about the different pressures of the heart, and now we can build on it. For example, you know, we have a patient, let's say, with mitral stenosis. Okay, let's do that red. So let's, the patient has mitral stenosis and the blood really cannot, the pressure um, in the left atrium and the left ventricle cannot normalize, um, uh, equalize. So then the pressure in the, in the left atrium actually becomes maybe like 20. That would increase the wedge pressure uh, to 20. Uh, that would increase the pulmonary artery pressure to be maybe 20. Uh, and then it will transmit back into the left ventricle and into the left atrium, which kind of becomes like 10. We're just assuming these numbers. So basically, 
we are getting a very high reg pressure, the patient will have difficulty breathing, and um, when you put in a swan, you will actually see a very high right, um, um, you'll see a high reg pressure. Uh, however, the system, it doesn't really affect the blood pressure here in the left-sided system. So with, with the knowledge of the basic, uh, of how the different pressures of the heart work, we can actually build on this and do a lot of uh, reasoning as to you know what the patient has based on the different pressures we get. So the next lecture would be about mitral stenosis, about uh, septic shock, cardiogenic shock,